I would say that probably the time has come to talk about cultural exchange and more cultural programs in Europe again in order to get a better feeling, more integrated, more feeling together in a community. Fumbly Exchange, they've been tweeting quite a lot over the past two days. Um, he wishes he could ask if 99% of tax-paying enterprise throughout the EU equals SMEs, how does the EU give incentives and support such efforts from the ground up? One of the, the, the big issues that is so difficult to, to think and talk about is the commonality of being European. And if I could test something on you, the late Tony Judd, who was a social sociologist and historian, spoke of the ethical coherence of Europe. Um, we share values, we oppose the death penalty, and in spite of what's happened on most of the panels today, we're more or less in favor of the equality of, quality of women, um, anti-colonialism, those kind of things. And whether that is something that we should think more about and talk more about. There's three types of people that benefits the most out of being part of the European Union businessmen, politicians, and students. How do we get Europe to benefit ordinary people, um, middle-class people who, don't have, uh, who are working in service jobs, who don't really manage to make the, 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 the most out of being part of um, the, the European Union? I hope that um, uh, SMEs is a strategic answer from the uh, from European Commission <coughs> regarding uh, youth unemployment. Uh, um, SMEs at the moment in my country, one of their main problems regards credit. Uh, credit access is now a determinant uh, problem for development and for, and for the survival of our SMEs. Uh, we are trying to solve the banking uh, situation as fast as possible. We expect the banking uh, recapitalization program to be completed by this summer in order uh, for our banks, all of our banks are private banks, um, that resume their normal lending to the economy and especially to SMEs. Uh, the recent support by the European Central Bank to uh, banking, European banking system is also important uh, for uh, avoiding the credit crunch and it is, we expect that the European Central Bank will, will keep a close monitoring of what is happening in what regards credit access, uh, taking into consideration that is determinant for the future of our economies and for the survival of our SMEs. Just a, 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 a quick address on the shared values and commonality um, question. I, I entirely uh, agree uh, with the perspective that Europe is a shared value community and we have uh, an ethical coherence. Um, but we, we, should, uh, take into we should not take this uh, kind of reasoning too far. We have a challenge regarding this matter, which is um, the Turkey demand for uh, joining in the EU. It has been waiting for more than 10 years on this. Ethical uh, arguments have been uh, uh, addressed regarding this request. So I think we should uh, look at the shared value as uh, a richness of our political union, but not as a reason to avoid addressing strategic moves that must be considered uh, in time uh, for the future of our union. I try to reflect upon uh, the, the question about how does Europe affect ordinary people? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I used to say that uh, Europe uh, was like, like the air you breathe in the morning. Uh, you are affected by Europe 24 hours a day, but you simply do not know it. When I was a child, and my parents made a great effort to send me abroad to learn languages, so this is why I can address you today. But it was very difficult for Spain to go abroad, you know, because firstly, it was very expensive. Secondly, because the certificates you may gain were not approved by the Spanish authorities. Uh, thirdly, because, because the, the, the facilities 
for troubling were difficult. When I became a member of the European Parliament, uh, a ticket, plane ticket to Brussels, cost about 1,000 euros. It is not by coincidence that now you can find cheap tickets. It's not coincidence. It's the European Union. It's competition. There are many airlines that you can use. So many people take it for granted that this has always been so. But the, the, the Europe I have in my memory is a Europe of different currencies, of passports, of borders, everything very expensive, and you, you could only buy certain things in certain countries. For many, many years, I've, 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 I haven't brought anything abroad, because you can find everything at home. Well, this at the end, this is, happens every day, this is Europe. And we live there with a lot of security and safe, in health conditions, we should we would think about what would happen to our lives <laughs> if the European Union did not exist. I can assure you that the difference would be high. Let me, let me try and sort of respond to the, the SME's point that came through on Twitter, first of all. Um, I would suggest two answers to that. First is to have a venture capital regime that operates across the EU so that venture capital can be channeled uh, into uh, SMEs in any part of the Union. And secondly, it applies at national level, but it applies at European level too. We need to make regulations less costly and less complicated so that uh, they don't s provide a disincentive, which they too often do, for SMEs to hire people. Um, that, when I talk to small businessmen in my constituency, is regulation is usually the first issue that they raise. Whether it's coming from Westminster or whether it's coming from, from Brussels, that is often what stops them from taking on a new apprentice or taking on a new full-time worker, and we need to get to grips with that and go beyond the Commission target, which deals at the moment with administrative regulation only, and try to cut the overall cost of European regulation on our business sectors. Um, on the um, Tony Jutt point, I, was, that was, that was a very interesting question about... I, I mean, I, would, I, I agreed with the thrust of what was said. I would qualify it um, in saying that uh, particularly for someone from the United Kingdom, we would also think of that uh, ethical community and identity as being shared, and, I mean, most obviously by some European countries like Norway, outside the EU, but also by democracies like Australia and New Zealand and Canada, uh, which of course sprang from uh, you know, uh, uh, European foundation. Um, so you know, we would have a slightly different slant on it, but I think there is a core element of truth. And I can actually find some agreement with Inigo. Like I said at one of the sessions this morning, if you compare the history of Central and Eastern Europe in the 20 years after 1919, 1920, with the 20 years after the fall of the Berlin Wall and the end of the Cold War, there is just no comparison that you actually have prosperous, pretty stable democracies, still with problems, but uh, applying the rule of law. Whereas in the 1920s and 1930s, you had countries that were often at each other's throats and which uh, had unstable regimes prone to uh, dictatorship or military takeover. And I think that the institutionalization of the rule of law and human rights and democratic values through the EU is a key part of the explanation for that difference between the recent history and the history of the earlier part of the 20th century. Um, on, on, on the, the point about um, you know, benefits to the ordinary citizen, um, I, I think, I think the, the benefits are there. I mean, to start with, the businessmen and the businesswomen employ people. Um, and if businesses are doing better because they are freer to operate across Europe, then that is more likely to keep people in jobs than if those barriers to trade and investment 
were in place. Secondly, there is the freedom that we have as consumers in our own lives. Whether it's, as Inigo said, to buy things, you know, I can go into a shop um, down my high street and I can buy an excellent Rioja, and Inigo can go into shops in Spain and buy Earl Grey tea or Marmite. Um, and, and, um, <laughs> Who's you know, getting the, a better deal there? <laughs> <laughs> and the, uh, uh, and, and you know, the, we, we can do that. And on the bigger scale, too, um, my local railway line is owned by a company whose parent is Deutsche Bahn. So, you know, the investment and the experience and the customer service record of Deutsche Bahn is providing the services uh, to me and to my constituents. I just wish that some of our partners would be equally open with their services markets as both Spain and the UK are already. Um, and, uh, yes, that's, that's, that's right. Uh, but but you know, London is now the seventh largest French city in the world um, because there are so many French people working there, many of them in the city, um, in, in financial services companies. Um, you go into almost any hotel anywhere in the UK and you will find workers from the Baltic Republics or from Hungary um, or from uh, Slovenia or Slovakia uh, working there. You go right in the north of Scotland. I went into a hotel there a few years ago. All the staff were Estonian. Mm. Um, so that those opportunities are there. That freedom of movement, travel, to work temporarily or permanently is enormously important and we, sh we shouldn't ignore that's a benefit to ordinary citizens as well.